Hey guys, Flo from Off to Lancy. I'm a French Australian filmmaker based in French Alps, and today I thought I'd give you a tour of my filmmaking studio. So obviously this is a work in progress, but I'm quite happy with how it is now. And I thought this might be helpful to you if you're starting to build your own, if you're currently gathering some ideas. All the links will be in the description as well. Before I start, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. Okay, so as you may know, I've moved from Sydney to France about like eight months ago and we moved from like a small apartment to a house and the main goal that I had coming here was to build a studio that was purely for, for what I do and I was ready to, to be used and I was separate from the, from the rest of the house. So I used to edit from a very small room in Sydney and I had to pack and unpack everything and I was quite painful. So today I just want to give you like a small tour of um, what it looks like now and how it works for me. Vlogging is definitely not my thing, so please bear with me. Um, I think this is still the best way to show you around. I'm just gonna put a tripod and show you the main areas and decide, and explain to you why I decided to, to do this and for what reasons. So I'm just gonna separate the videos into like the desk and the gear and the heavier gear and the prep bench as well, so that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to, to make a video like this because I think this is quite important when you work from home especially these days to have a space that is yours but also a space that works for for what you do and then you feel um, inspired when you, you when you get in and you can actually get to work um, straight away obviously each studio is going to be different for me the main thing is i do um, filmmaking for work i do documentary filmmaking i do commercial and travel as well I also take stills, but mainly um, my studio is for editing as well as doing some reviews for some people as well. I've watched heaps of videos online just to have an idea of what people were doing um, until I realized that it was actually better if I was doing it the way that I wanted because that's, it needs to work for, for me. As you can see behind me, it's a pretty decent um, space. I think it's about eight meters by three meters and then the roof is slightly um, slanted as well. So I'm gonna take you around and show you what I've done, but yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so this is a main gear shelf. That's where the gear um, that I use the most is. So in the main section here, I've got all my lenses. Uh, so I've got the cinema lenses here, I've got my Canon lenses, I've got the telephotos, um, I've got my Fuji camera, and my film camera, 35 millimeter Canon, and I've got a bunch of accessories. I've got the old VMPCC. So all that's here, it's pretty much like, it's fragile, but it's, it's I wanna have it on display, but I would never put my main camera here, for example, because of dust and other issues. Then I've got all um, boxes here. So I've got a small read mag box. I've got um, spray, like atmosphere spray. I've got the drone, I've got my filters. I've got the other mag box. On top here, I've got all the boxes that I keep for some reason, I'd like to keep boxes. Uh, of gear that I either know that I'm going to keep for a long time or that kind of worth like quite a bit um, and also have like a bunch of other boxes like the Blackmagic boxes behind the EOS R so things like that. This shelving unit is actually um, IKEA, it's a bra system and uh, it's fairly cheap, um, easy to, to build as well. It's quite um, sturdy because I think it's built to be a garage or gardening feature or something like that so it's actually pretty sturdy quite light um, but it doesn't move and you can kind of like pick your own configuration so uh, for example I wanted this wood thing to put the lenses so it looks nice but I've got metal here metal underneath here and you can buy like as many as you want and you've got mounting options everywhere which is pretty good I think between the one two three the three benches and this I think it cost me about um, I think 500 bucks roughly so that's that's pretty good this is where I put all my sound stuff so I've got my life kit for example here I've got my Sennheiser mic I've got a pouch here that pretty much holds any cable that I own um, which is just for like transferring for example it could be HDMI um, I've got gaff tape here I've got lots of filters here here I've got all the bits and pieces that I don't know where to put and um, so when I bought this shelving unit I bought the separation as well because I knew that I needed small compartment for small items um, and these are like without getting too messy I also don't want to put a section for each individual item so I know that this is all mounting things that could be like small rig bits and pieces for example here I've got an ICU that's free so when I go on jobs I just basically pick and choose what I need put it here and then this take this whole thing and then you just go 
Um, but that works really well for me. I might change it in the future, but I know that this is sound, this is cable, this is filters and tape, and this is small um, mounting options. So then underneath, I've got a two pelican. So the first pelican here, and I think I've showed you guys before, but this is mainly my main um, kit. So I've got the BMPCC, I've got um, the follow focus, the battery, the monitor. So basically when I go and shoot, I just take this and I know that everything related, related to my main camera is in here. That include batteries as well, the chargers and strap and everything like this. And I don't want to have the camera on display because that's my work camera. And I don't know if for some reason someone comes here or if I bump into the shelving and then something falls like um, anything but the camera is fine. It's also kept away from here to direct sunlight, which is quite important. And on this one here, which is a smaller one, I've got, I feel like I'm James Bond opening things like that. Um, this is my kit of um, Zeiss lenses. So, so I'm, I'm happy to keep lenses like these ones, for example, Canon or Makey, because they, lenses that you can, that I can buy if I need to again, but the Zeiss lenses, that's a different story, so I don't really want to damage them, so they kind of like sit nicely here and they're protected. That's how I actually ship them here as well from Sydney to, uh, to France. At the back here, I've got another Pelican, and that's my Osmo. Um, all the accessories, I mean, not all the accessories, but like the cameras and the filters, and they're all in there, so that's kind of nice as well. This is really cheap, this is like 40 bucks or something, so. This is a charging station or charging bay. Um, so I've got the charger for the LP6 batteries, which I use for my USR and the Blackmagic. I've got the MPF um, Sony L series ones for the monitor, for lights. I've got the ones for the Fuji and I've got a multi uh, adapter here. I've got the V-Log charger here and I usually keep my small light, like that's a small aperture LED and the aperture bulb here. And what I like about having this is that it saves a lot of time and um, when you need to charge heaps of batteries it's really nice to have everything kind of like laid out and always ready to to be used and i've got batteries from australia from the us from europe uk so it's kind of like i've got a, a bunch so i've got like a, a mix of different batteries a mix of different chargers so it's really nice to have them all here and i've got also underneath and i'll show you a bit later a multi-port that's actually international so at the same time on the same extension i can plug three different like type of plugs and that's really handy on shoot because my light for example is french but the camera is australian and the batteries are us and i've also put a small mat here and um, that's just more so the chargers don't don't slide around and this is a good height as well it's slightly higher than the other two benches that i have um, but it's a really good height and allows me to also put stuff underneath Okay, so underneath the charging station, I've got a duffel bag here, which is really handy and it fits perfectly. On this level here, I've got a small Joby that I use for my iPad. I've got the DJI charger that's also linked to the same PowerPoint. Um, and I've got other accessories here, like a pouch and I've got my iPad stand. And yeah, so that, that whole section is just basically for batteries and small like powered accessories as well. That's the latest that I bought. I might just add another shelf here as well to put one of my other bags. I've got so many bags and that take quite a bit of room. And I don't really want to hang them because they're quite heavy and I need to get a structure to hang them as well. So this works really well for me. And this also hides all the, the points, the power points here as well. This is gear shelf number two. Um, this is where I keep most of the bulkier, bigger items. So I've got my easy rig at the bottom, the case for the 120D. I've got a light dome here, I've got reflectors, other small lights, I've got boxes that I need to keep for some reason, I've got another tripod, I've got my boom arm, and that's the same type as the other one, so that's still IKEA, it's still a bro system, um, super cheap, really sturdy, and on top of that I have my shoulder rig, um, the gimbal, like the items that kind of need to be built up that I don't want to undo um, so I don't waste time and they're the items that I don't use as much but they take a lot of room and they're quite handy so I usually put them here because I don't go into that corner as much it's also close to the window that's behind me so I don't like to have direct sunlight on lenses or backpacks or anything else so everything here is pretty sturdy it's like metal or it's within a case so it heats fine and it's against the wall so I know that I'm not going to move that anywhere as you can see here, I also have um, some rest of the sound panel that I've used, so I might use them 
anywhere else in the room. I'm not quite sure yet because I've got a lot of stuff on the wall. This is a light kind of light stand corner. This is where I keep my tripods, light stands, the big C stand on wheels. Uh, I've got the Aperture 120D with a light dome and I usually use a small one for reviews and when I light myself for talking heads for example. And I like to have everything built up um, so when I need to shoot I can just grab the right stand or actually carry this on because it's on wheel directly in the middle of the studio without having to move too much stuff and it works really well like this way because it takes a lot of time to build like light stand or to mount a light so everything is set up ready to be used and I've got one for the boom arm for sound I've got one for um, to mount a reflector I've got the light on this one and I've got also my backpack here and a main tripod and the one that I'm using right now which is also the one that I use for reviews or for myself and they both um, Manfrotto tripods. I feel so awkward making this video it's like it's really hard because I need to film, film like on a super wide angle to show you guys everything in each part but I just I just feel like an idiot just like bending down and talking to you to the camera but anyway this is a part that's just under the window so that's not a part that I use um, a lot because I kind of like go back and forth opening the windows or closing it so I don't want to have anything that's just in front so I keep my main hiking backpack uh, one of the photography bag as well and I've got um, some reflectors here I also have two light stands that I've just received I mean like what like one light stand and one reflector holder so normally like I probably would put them with the other ones but trying to still figure out like if I need to have them all out and um, so for now they stay here. For now this works pretty well and when I'm done kind of like hiking or when I'm done like traveling I kind of like just come back here and dump everything against against the wall so I always keep that space clear because I need to move the light and whatever's behind me um, this way. So this corner actually looks a lot bigger on camera I think because I'm using a 10 to 18 mil um, but it's actually probably two meters by by one and a half meter. It's a nice little spot and when you get into the studio it kind of makes sense to have the items that you don't touch as much here. Okay, so I know on this channel I'll talk a lot about cameras and lenses and tech, but I actually like books more than anything. So these are more the, the visual books. Um, so for example, I've got my um, graphic novels, cinema book, like for example, like Blade Runner, Game of Thrones, Mad Men. I've got comics as well, I've got mangas because I love um, anime, so I've got Dragon Ball Z, I've got Ghost in the Shell, um, I've got some French um, comics as well, and some magazines here at the bottom could be Nat Geo, could be Cinema Magazine as well. So I like having this because again it's just another like personal touch and I love having my cameras and I love having my lenses on display but having something that's also completely not unrelated but something that's just more about um, what I love instead of what I do um, even though they're kind of the two like mix all the time but this is this is really nice so I kind of like change the order from time to time but it also adds a bit of color which I like and I just love books because they are um, tangible so sometimes I would just like edit and stop for half an hour and just read and I try to do that quite a lot because that's my way of uh, relaxing as well next is the prep bench so this is what I use um, to build my rigs and to get any cameras or lenses ready before shoot or just for myself um, I've actually put on top a um, giant kind of mouse pad um, just so I don't damage the, the gear and the, the top of this as well so this is a really good height and allows me to kind of like take the gear from the main areas and just bring it here and just have a clear view of like what I'm building so it's very useful especially when you have to like unscrew things and put things around the great thing about this as well it's still the same collection the IKEA bra uh, it's on wheels so I actually I can actually move it around that's the one that you guys see in the reviews most of the time so I just remove this and put the camera pretty much where this one is I can also move this on the other side of the room which is quite handy and that's what I use the setup that I use when I do talking heads when I'm in front of my computer um, so this is really good and I think this was like a hundred bucks or something and and like I said before, I always leave this space of the studio in the middle clear uh, just so I can move this one from one side to, to the other. I've got like a bunch of um, compartments here, so they're mostly padded, so I can just put them in my backpack if I need to. Um, underneath here is also 
the um, removalist uh, carpet that I use for sound dampening. So I just put this on the floor when I do um, not so much reviews, but most like mostly like talking heads. Um, so that's quite handy. And I've got another box here. What well, again, just like small personal items that I just don't want, don't want to display. I've got tools here as well. I've got like replacement for my globes and that kind of stuff. So things that are not really pretty that I don't really want to see, but at least I know they're there and I don't need to, to go up and down the house just to, to get them. So this is more of a vintage kind of personal uh, corner. These are items that I used to use as a kid and I decided to keep. Um, most of you are probably too young to remember what these are, but I've got like a Game Boy, for example. I've got a PlayStation 1 that still works. I've got some old games. I've got a Daft Punk album that I recently found after they decided that they split because I was really sad. Uh, so I just decided to put this on display for now. I've got my mum's vintage um, old camera. Um, and I've got also here a very old um, video camera that my mom used to use uh, when we used to go on trip when I was probably like five or six years old, so like 25 years ago. And so yeah, so this is kind of like a reminder of the things that I used to like, and I'm not sure if this is gonna stay here, but I mean, obviously I love new cameras and new like Playstations and that kind of stuff, but this is also nice to have because it looks kind of like, it looks kind of fun and kind of retro, and I, I just, I really like that. So in that corner there, just behind me, there's also a tripod that stays there the whole time. This is what I use when I do talking heads to the camera, when I put the EOSR on it and it just stays there. So I just don't have to like worry about just taking it in and out because it gets a bit awkward with the cables behind. Um, and I also have just a small table here with a touch lamp and my booster as well. So this is the desk area, probably the most important part. And um, I wanted my desk to be quite simple i didn't want any clutter i just wanted the essentials and i could access them like very easily and start from the end i've got the two speakers adam audio they're just amazing for actual accurate audio they're just like studio monitors then i've got the macbook 16 inch that's just on a stand so i can just take it in and out if i need to um, the screen is a 24 inch lg ultrafine that's made for apple so i just retain all the control as if it was like an imac for example um, then i've got the focus right as an audio interface, which I usually just use to power the, the speakers and to monitor audio. Then I've got a keyboard. I've actually got a bunch of keyboards, but for some reason I keep coming back to the Mac. Even though it's not the greatest, it's the one that I am the quickest with and I just know um, the most, just because I own the MacBook, like a couple of MacBooks, and I'm, I think I'm used to just the placement and the feel of it. Um, Next, I've got two hard drives, GTEC hard drives. Um, they're both 10 terabytes, one Thunderbolt, one just USB-C, and they're mainly just for archives. Um, and I've got a charging pad uh, behind me as well, which I use to charge my watch, um, my phone. Um, I've also got just a little pad here because I drink coffee and tea a lot. And I've got just a giant, uh, another one, a very large mouse pad um, that I use with the keyboard and the mouse. Uh, speaking of the mouse, it's the Logitech um, MX2, which I love because the Apple mouse is just terrible, uh, both in terms of comfort and design. So this one works really well for me. This is an Ikea um, desk. So I think you probably saw online lots of configuration like this. It works pretty well, it's pretty cheap. This is about a hundred bucks. And the two sets of drawers, I think they're called Alex. Um, I use them to put anything from um, SSDs, cables, personal documents, um, and also anything that's related to desks. It could be like pens, it could be uh, notepads and that kind of stuff. So I can clear the top of the desk. Uh, I might have some adapters, some hard drives if I'm using like a, if I'm editing a big project, for example, I can just put the hard drives on the right side and just plug them straight into the Mac. But I like this setup and a lot of people are surprised that I don't use a bigger screen. I'm used to 24 inch. I like that size. I think it's uh, you can get close to it without having to look left and right or up and down a lot. And it's also a good size to view um, 4K um, full screen. So I really like that. The chair, um, which is not the most um, amazing looking chair. It's actually quite ugly but it's comfortable and it's an ikea one as well and i've had three ikea chairs and this is definitely the best one i'll link in the description as well i can't remember the name right now but i think it's about 120 bucks or something and it's quite um comfortable so i'll spend roughly between 8 and 12 hours on it 
and I've got actually quite terrible back and this is really good for me. I think you must have noticed by now I've got sound panels as well so I've put them around the area that I record audio so whether I do voiceover or if I just listen to music or if I actually do edit as well without the earphones um, it's good to have this because the shape of the roof means that the audio just bounce a lot so these helped um, you don't need to put like the whole wall this is enough um, but I've just measured them so they kind of like look like they've been put with purpose. I think you've also seen that there's quite a lot of posters around the, the place and that's um, our first wedding anniversary, the present my wife uh, got me. I've been putting them all around the place just to give a bit uh, color and just um, just have something a bit fun and something visual that I can swap as well. They're actually hung on velcro which is really good because I can move them or just like replace them if I need to. And I think it's quite nice as well to have a reminder of what you what you like, what you aspire to. Some people have quotes and for example and that's my thing, that's my inspiration just looking at posters or colors that I like. So I've got modern movies behind me. I've got Interstellar and Blade Runner for example. I've got The Revenant, Moonlight, Parasite but I've got also vintage ones like uh, The Goonies and uh, Star Wars and also Pulp Fiction. Just movies that made me fall in love with cinema. Obviously I've got The Lord of the Rings and uh, I've got a bunch more that I might pull or just swap later but for now this, um, this is it. I think that's it for me today guys. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions regarding the gear or anything else. I'll try to link all the items underneath and um, yeah as always thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!